Hello, welcome to Adopt and Clayson. Thank you for joining this channel. Um, I have a very quick question to illustrate specific facts. Uh, we'll be using some prioritization and bow type, but mostly bow type question. Um, as usual, when they give you a case, just um really carefully find out the situation and be, make the diagnosis and the rest is history. Client present to the emergency room, right? A 56 year old male came to the emergency room with chest pain. The report that the symptoms started after upper respiratory infection four weeks ago. What is the pain? It's a prolytic chest pain. So when you associated with this plural and described as sharp, aggravated drawing inspiration, right? And relieved by sitting up or leaning forward. You deny any trauma or a, a prior episode. You should be able to make a diagnosis right here. I have pain, some kind of chest pain, but it's relieved when I take, um, when I lean forward or sitting up, but worse when I take inspiration. I have a potential polypidemia, no allergies. I smoke for 20 years on appropriate medication. Heart rate is elevated, temperature slightly, and, and blood pressure uh, normal, size 97. You should be able to make a little bit of educated guess of what is going on. Pain, worse by taking breath and relief by leaning forward is pericarditis, acute pericarditis until proving otherwise. But if that is not enough, um, we can go to the next page and see what it's giving us. We give you this more information to be able to make the diagnosis. What information are they giving you? Scratchy or squeezing sound on auscultation. This is what we call friction rub. So we have the friction rub. There's a diffuse ST elevation in all leads. This is also classic. A cocardiogram shows small fluid in the pericardial sac. The client was prescribed what? Cortisone. Based on this, chest pain, believe when you lean forward, aggravated when you take a breath, you have a scratchy sound on auscultation, diffuse ST elevation in all leads. This is not myocardial infarction, no. This is acute pericarditis. These are all classic symptoms of pericarditis. So that is the diagnosis. At 1600, patient will prescribe cortisone. This is the treatment of choice. That's the medication we do use for pericarditis. But at 1800, two hours later, what happened? Patient has shortness of breath, distance at sound, he has JVD with a CVP of 18 and narrow pulse pressure and blood pressure of that. This is consistent with cardiac tamponade. Think about it. I have chest pain that you believe by me leaning forward. And this is my heart. Okay. Over here, there's all constriction blocking my heart from pumping. That is the pericarditis. It's pushing on it. It's squeezing it. So the heart cannot pump. Therefore, your systolic blood pressure goes down, right? If you cannot pump, blood build up and go into your lung. You have shortness of breath. From the lung, it go to the right side, and you have systemic, you get a right heart failure. So you get systemic congestion. That's why your CVP is high. So those are all signs and symptoms. Then you develop pulse pressure because your systolic goes down, but your diastolic goes up. So your, your diastolic get closer to your systolic. This is why 90 is get 80 is getting closer to 90 diastolic. And the CVP is consistent with the venous congestion. Your heart cannot pump because it's being squeezed. So you have distant heart sound. And so those are the key factors to make a diagnosis. I've provided everything that you needed. So what is the issue? Which of the following highlighted information um, need priority intervention? So which one you think you need in priority intervention? Scratchy sound on auscultation, that's the friction rub. This is diffuse ST elevation in all leads. 
Shortness of breath, distance at sound, narrow, post pressure, and CVP. When they give you a priority intervention, think about the one that is going to care the patient. An expected finding is not something you, you, you pay attention to. Unexpected, something you don't expect. And when you see it, the patient is dying. Scratchy sound on auscultation, that's the friction rub. That is what I expect when you have pericarditis, so I don't worry about it. Diffuse ST elevation in all leads, that is how we make the diagnosis. It's not killing the patient. That is normal to see in friction, um, pericarditis, so it's not a problem. Shortness of breath, yes, you're developing cardiac tamponade. It's a problem. Distance at sound, yeah. You're developing cardiac tamponade, it's worrisome. Narrow pulse pressure, yeah, cardiac tamponade, not bad. In CVP of 18, this is how you prioritize. Those that are going to kill the patient, you don't care about it. It's an expected finding. Okay, now let's see, go back to the bow tie. You should name two actions or two parameters the next should now monitor. You know we have a cardiac tamponade. So, that's a big problem. This is not a heart failure. It's no hemorrhaging. It's no tension in motorized because there's no mention of breath sounds. Therefore, I have cardiac tamponade. And why did the patient develop cardiac tamponade? When you look at the echocardiogram, there is some fluid there around the heart. It's from the aortic pericarditis inflammation. And sometimes you develop too much fluid. And you have constrictive pericarditis causing cardiac tamponade or effusion related. So this may be effusion, pericarditis, uh, constrictive pericarditis causing that problem. Therefore, what do you think? Immediate action the nurse should take, should let the doctor know. Okay, we, we're already treating the patient with NSAID. We you don't use Tylenol. We treat them with NSAID, so this is not a problem. We not, notify the doctor, and then we remove the fluid from the pericardium, okay, using a, a needle. So that's why we do synthesis, removal of fluid going into the pericardium. So these are our day. After you do this invasive procedure, so the way you do bow tie, make a diagnosis first. Never go action or monitor. Make a diagnosis. Then after diagnosis, go to the actions you need to do. Take right now, priority intervention. Then when you do that, you monitor those priority. So we got to monitor those priority. The way we can monitor how the patient is doing, see their vital signs and their cardiac function. Because we went into cardiac tamponade, we want to make sure their heart is back doing its problem. They're going to have pain, that's fine. They're going to have friction rub, that is okay. And so expected findings and the problem. What you monitor is those that will kill the patient if you don't have any clue. And so this is the short case, like I said, uh, to help you understand how to do both eye questions and some prioritization. Take care of yourself. Keep charging. Just subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And all the best of luck. Good luck.